Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here and welcome or welcome back to another YouTube video on the channel. And today guys, we are going to be continuing our AFL 2022 three game match reviews. Now yes, here we are for another massive three games and I'll tell you what, these three games were absolutely vital and crazy games they were. Some really interesting games, crazy games I can tell you that for sure right now. Three absolute ripping games here uh, for Saturday Twilight, Saturday Night and Saturday Night Footy. So really exciting stuff. One Saturday Twilight, two Saturday Nighters. The games we're going to be reviewing in this video are North Melbourne versus Richmond, Carlton versus Geelong and Fremantle versus Sydney. Again, as I said before, three massive games. We're going to be starting at Marvel Stadium for Saturday Twilight Footy, North Melbourne versus Richmond. So I made a video last night about it, and here we are for the full in-depth review of this game. Now, North Melbourne 14 92 actually beat the Tigers 11-22-88. Richmond, very inaccurate, but North Melbourne, is there something brewing up? Now, they changed coaches throughout the week, but are they getting better? Are they getting better? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Last week versus Collingwood was a very, very valid effort. This week was even valider. Uh, this, this week was the win against... Um, Richmond now, again, they weren't the greatest in the second half, but it was the first half, and their accuracy as well, 14-8, compared to Richmond's 11-22. Richmond were 3-12 at half time, and um, when you see a team like that, 3-12, 11-22, you know you're not really going to be putting up a score to win when you kick that many behinds. It's really insane, uh, and they had way more scoring shots than North Melbourne, and probably should have put the game way earlier, but North Melbourne, against all odds, still win, uh, even after Richmond take the lead back late in the final quarter. So it was a very even um, first quarter with North Melbourne just being the better of the sides and North Melbourne can actually put up a very okay first quarter. And then the second quarter, they just go absolutely bang. They kick six goals two to Richmond's one goal seven. And um, yeah, at half time, there's a lead of about 30 points, 32 points, I believe it is, at half time. And then, and then in the third quarter, Richmond start to brew things back. They have a really good third quarter, come back to within a couple of kicks, and then they do the work in the last quarter as well. But then North Melbourne just kick a goal late. Richmond absolutely butcher a chance. They would have won had of Jake Arts gone back and take that taken that set shot to win. But alas, no, he played on really stupidly, if you ask me. He probably should have taken the set shot. But North Melbourne, very deserving winners. They did lead for most of the game and didn't choke this one. Six goals for Cam Zerha. It was, uh, he was the king of Marvel. Uh, Jai Simpkin, 34 disposals and 119 fantasy. Eight tackles for Lockie Young. But what a performance by North Melbourne. They were going to win again this year. I mean, I'm not sure if everyone thought that. But after last week's uh, pretty good performance against Collingwood, people felt like they were going to win against this year. Probably not against Richmond. They still do have a few easier clubs to come up against. But, wow, what a win for um, for North Melbourne. And they're back on the winner's list in some fine style. Uh, 198 Fantasy for Simpkin. 110 for Vloston. 108 for Davies Uniac. 98 for Short. 96, uh, 98 for Revolt. Goals behinds now. Six goals for Zerha. Three goals, four for Cumberland. Three goals for Curtis. And listen to this. Two goals, six for Revolt. Now, again, that could have easily been a bag of six that Revolt could have kicked in this game. And really, the Tigers, as I said, should have really put them away. Um, Richmond should have really put North Melbourne away a lot earlier than what they did. Cumberland, three goals, four. Two goals, six for Revolt. Them two could have both had bags of seven or, or six. Um, had they been more, a little bit more accurate? So, a bit of a disappointing uh, accuracy factor there for Richmond. But again, North Melbourne, they, they were the better team. They played better than uh, Richmond penultimately. And now Richmond, their race for the eight is looking tough. 34 disposal for Simpkin. 28 for Davies Uniac. 26 for Scott and Prestia. 24 for Greenwood and Cochran as well as Short. 23 for Stevenson, who actually played pretty well after having some rocky games this year. Nine marks for Vloston, 8 for McDonald and Revolt, 7 for Davies, Uniac and Prestia, tackles 8 for Young, 6 for Simpkin, Greenwood and Vloston, 5 for Davies, Uniac. Coleman Jones up against his former team, gets a bragging rights, who would have thought that? Um, and then 5 for Pickett as well. Here yeah, 36 for Nan Curvis, 25 for Goldstein, 7 for uh, Coleman Jones, 4 for Gibkus, 1 for Bolter. Um, and now team starts, we go where... Um, Richmond went inside 50 way more times. Like, look at that. Look at that stat, and Richmond should have won. Uh, you, if you could guess a winner by that stat, I think everyone would guess Richmond. Um, nah, that they absolutely butchered their chances. 11-22, as I said, that, that just doesn't really cut it. North were good around the stoppage clearances and, and won the clearance. 
aspects of the game. Richmond took way more marks than North. North led for most of the game. They were deserving winners in the end, um, but oh, they're lucky Richmond's inaccuracy cost them because otherwise they could have gone down North Melbourne by a hefty amount. Richmond, their case for the eight, well, their case for the four is over for top four. Their case for the eight now is have to be strong because they've been very poor in the past few weeks yes they did make a good turnaround but just not enough to seal the deal and these four points could have been absolutely vital and will be vital come the end of the year they'll probably end up missing out on a home elimination final and i reckon their best chance now is to sneak in and make the eighth spot so now to the mcg we go for the first of two saturday night games where carlton 8 7 55 couldn't do enough against Geelong, 12-13, 85. The Cats win straight by 30 points. And um, after half time, at half time, pretty much, the Blues looked absolutely good. The Cats dominated in all areas. And now, I reckon, definitely flag favourites to win, depending on Melbourne's result versus Port Adelaide. Carlton gave nothing, really. Mackay was kept quiet by De Koning, who De Koning is probably a year outside chance for your rising star. I think Dacos has it, but... I mean, look, Sam De Koning for the Cats. The both De Konings played the two best forwards, uh, two best forward duos in the competition met. And while the Cats forward duo proved better, although um, although what well, um, although Mackay still did play pretty well. Um, but yeah, it was it was an interesting game in the first quarter. Really, a game hard to take your eyes off. And then the second quarter just. Midway through, it just started to dry out a little bit, and the Cats really gained the mo- momentum, and, and then from there, there on, it was just all them. Uh, it was just one-way traffic in the third and the fourth quarter, leading to a pretty boring game in the end. But, um, yeah, what a win for the Cats. They... They, they would have loved this, and, and they've put themselves clear favourites uh, or um, established themselves in the rest of the competition. Carlton now, their chance of a top four are hanging on by a thread. Um, they obviously have to try and do something, and quickly they want to make the top four. But again, there is still chances for them, but they are in um, currently seventh spot on the table, which is very disappointing for them, um, and they might not even get a home elimination final. I feel like they will probably miss out on the top um, top four at this rate. Uh, but it was a really interesting midfield battle. And again, the Cats midfield just proved to be stronger than the Blues. 33 disposal for Sam Walsh, 3 goals for Cameron, 109 fantasy for Selwood, 8 tackles for Tom Atkins. Um, the Cats just had him a lot better in most aspects of the game. 109 fantasy for Selwood, 105 for Walsh, 103 for Duncan, 102 for Newman, um, 101 for Fisher, 99 for Kennedy and Hewitt, 96 for Cameron, 95 for Doherty and Tui. Now to goals and behinds, we go where three goals for Cameron and Kerno. Kerno, again, he's added three goals to what looks like a Coleman medal winning season for him. Uh, two goals for Hawkins and Holmes. Th- those two are both impressive. Stengel, he may have only got the one goal, but looks very lively and dangerous whenever he gets near the ball. Um... 29 disposal for Doherty, 33 for Walsh, 27 for Fisher, 26 for Newman and Hewitt, as well as Duncan, 25 for Selwood, 24 for Tui. Now to the Marks, 9 for Duncan uh, and Selwood, 6 for Walsh, Fisher, Kennedy, Smith and Hawkins. Now tackles, 8 for Atkins, 6 for Kennedy, uh, Tui and Close. And now to the hitouts we go, um, 26 for Stanley. Um, 21 for De Koning, 8 for Blitzarves, 4 for Hawkins, 1 for Mackay and Silvani, and I think that might be 1 for Cripps. Yes, it is. Um, right, now to team stats. And the Cats did go inside 50 more times than the Blues, 42-51. Uh, is there anything else looking interesting? Cats won the hitouts. Blues actually won the clearances, but centre clearance is where the Cats got going. And in towards the end of that second quarter, that is where the Cats absolutely started to win clearances outright. Um, so, yeah, they loomed as the big threat from there. Um, the Cats took double the Blues marks inside 58 to 16. More intercepts, way more contested marks. And, again, that could have been where the game was really won or lost for Carlton. Um, and led for most of the game. Deservant winners in the end, I would say, are the Cats. This is a massive case as to why they want to mount. This is the case to mount a premiership season. And I reckon they are very well on their way. Um, they've beaten some of the best teams in the competition. So I reckon um, they are definitely probably clear premiership favourites, uh, along with probably Melbourne, I reckon. So big stuff in the West. 
uh, Sydney's first win against Fremantle at Opta Stadium, I believe. And it was Fremantle 9 11 65, Sydney 11 16 82. And the Swans have done it. And they have kept their top four hopes alive. Um, now, of course, Carlton still do have their top four hopes alive, but they're hanging on by a thread. Sydney, they all of a sudden come a game behind Fremantle and Brisbane, and they are breathing up their neck. And now they've gone two games clear of the eighth place, Richmond. And, oh, boy, I'll tell you, Richmond are in trouble. And that um, that pressure on eighth spot, I don't think it'll be any other spot, but eighth spot is still up for grabs. But I think Sydney have probably just done enough with Adelaide, North Melbourne, and the Giants still to be coming in their season. I think they've just done enough, and I reckon they will make the eight. If not make the eight, probably top four. But I reckon that they're, they're, they're also a step closer to a home elimination final maybe as well. Still so much to be playing out, but really interesting stuff. The Dockers, they've really pushed themselves back as well. This one hurts. They've shot themselves in the footprint ultimately, and, well, they're still on 48 points as well. So if the Demons do lose versus the Power, though, then they'll still be okay. But if the Demons win, uh, they'll go ahead without them. And, um, yeah, for the Dockers, that'll hurt. Um, they they obviously want to be up there on uh, 52 points, so they're going to have to try next week. Um, but, yeah, the Sydney Swans, they were the better of the sides. It looks to be a game of two halves where the Dockers own the first, the Swans own the second. So the Dockers, they did own the first half um, in a really low-scoring kind of game, but inaccurate. And luckily enough for the Swans, it didn't cost them being inaccurate. And look, a, a goalless third quarter from the Dockers, which is normally where they mount the case. The Swans did the reverse psychology, if you like to call it. They kicked three goals, four in that quarter, and they had the better of the third quarters uh, normally when it's the Dockers absolutely steaming away in that third quarter. It was the Swans that started to steam away. The Dockers led in the last, but then the Swans just absolutely steamed them away in the end. Um, the Dockers still had hope with a few minutes left on the clock, but it was always going to be too little, too late. They only managed to kick the one goal. The Swans responded later and kicked it. And um, what a win this is for Sydney. Again, the race for top four and top eight is really getting interesting now. This is another really important game, which is going to mean absolutely a lot for this game, uh, well, for the top top four and top eight. Uh, as it, it's still anyone's race, all the way down to seventh, um, there's can make it. And currently from second to seventh, it's just a game separating them, depending on Melbourne's result. Callum Mills, 132 fantasy, 127 for Warner. What a, what a bloke this man is. Next year, this year's already had a blowout season. Next year, he'll be a beast. He's going to be a beast for a long time with Chad Warner. Um, so he's going to be an absolute brilliant player. Um, and you just you definitely hope it's not going to be one year wonder, and it won't be. Uh, he'll be great again next year, and we're getting even more attention next year. Um, Jake Lloyd, 121 fantasy, 110 for Fox, 110 for Golden, another young superstar, Golden. I'll tell you that right now. Um, 104 for Rampy, 103 for Florent, 101 for Ryan. Um, now to the goals and behind, two for Tabner. Again, Papley, he just absolutely lights it up. He absolutely lights up a ground. He had the 17 touches again today was and was really important. And the two goals, Golden with two as well. Schultz, Banfield and Marty also had the two goals. Lobb had the one goal, four was inaccurate. 35 disposals for Chad Warner, 26 for Mills, 25 for Lloyd, 24 for Ryan and Brody, 24 for Fox and Parker, 23 for Young and Golden, 21 for Mundy and Florent, 20 for Brayshaw at Sarong. Uh, they actually got kept really quiet. Brayshaw got kept really quiet, just down to 20 as to Sarong. With the 20 as well. Papley got 17 disposals. Marks now 13 for Fox. Lloyd 11 for Florent Rampy. Parker 9 for the following. Um, Young and Mills 8 for Cox and Golden. Now the tackles we go where it was 9 for Mills, 7 for Robot and 5 for Frederick, 5 for Fife, um, Brody, Heaney and Rampy. Now to the hitouts where 41 for Darcy, 15 for Hickey. Uh, seven for Lob, four for Reed. Now to the team stats we go, where it was the Swans that went inside 50 10 more times than the Dockers. Dockers opting to go by hand more than the Swans. Um, the the Dockers smashed them in the hit outs, smashed well not smashed but one in the clearances as well. So um, yeah. But again, the, though the Swans took way more marks, 79 to 138. That is a big differential there. Um, massive difference in numbers. The Dockers led for most of the game, but it was almost a tale of two halves. The Dockers had the first one, the Swans had the second, and penultimately the second half is the bigger half to have if you want to pick a half. Uh, but what a game of footy it was.
Um, and yeah, it was a really exciting contest. Another ripping Saturday night game. It's going to mean a lot. And this result could be the proving factor, maybe for later on in the year, whether the Dockers make the top eight or not. Got Richmond at Marvel next week. Richmond don't play Marvel well, so they should pick up a win there. But if they don't, there will be problems around this Fremantle side in Sydney. They've got a pretty easy next three, next three weeks. Yes, the Roos are on the improvement, but they've got the Crows, the Roos, Giants. Those are three relatively even weeks, um, relatively easy weeks. And at least picking up two of those results would be absolutely critical. So now what is to come today? Well, Hawthorne play West Coast first up. Now this game means, again, absolutely nothing to the um, finals race. But it does mean absolutely everything to the Hawks who are trying to chase some more wins on their season. They've been a bit underrated, I reckon, the Hawks. I reckon they probably should have picked up a few more wins than what they have. This is another really important case to mount what they're worthy. The Eagles, they're on the rise again. They've been looking okay. So they need a performance to try and really grab the eyes of some fans and go, nah, we are here to improve. We don't want the bottom of the ladder as things like that, the bottom of the ladder wouldn't spoon race. All of a sudden, heats back up again. West Coast North. Um, yeah. And then Melbourne and Port Adelaide could shape to be the biggest game of what's to come, really. This game is going to be absolutely critical. Melbourne, if they win, they'll go ahead and again just say goodbye and probably lock in a top four spot if they manage to win. Um, and... For the power, they're playing for everything right now. If they lose this, their season is pretty much done and dusted. As to for Gold Coast, who are playing the Bombers at Marvel Stadium. Now, the Bombers, they're trying to get a really respectable season out of their year, trying to finish 13th. The Suns, they're trying to finish in the top eight. There is still some hope, but they have to get the win there. Now, that you can see that the Cats have established themselves from the rest of the competition on 52 points. Melbourne looking to join them. And, um, yeah, things have gotten interesting. Brisbane... Fremantle, Collingwood, all on 48 points. And then Sydney, Carlton on 44 points. Um, and if Brisbane, Fremantle, and Collingwood lose next week and the Swans and the Blues can win, well, then there's all sorts of trouble for these teams. And the top eight can be really shifted around. Now, Carlton's percentage and Collingwood's is really going to hurt them. So if it does come down to points, Collingwood and Carlton won't make the top four. It'll be a team like Sydney, Fremantle, or Brisbane that will because their percentage is still very healthy, around 120. Now, Richmond, their percentage is on 115, quite a high percentage if you're looking to make the eight. But they're on 36 points. St Kilda are on 36 points with 101%. So if Gold Coast and Port Adelaide win, St Kilda will go down to 12th and their season will look pretty much over. But again, if Port Adelaide or Gold Coast lose, well, then their season is over. So there's some really big stuff going on. Uh, and they're could potentially more well, there's no spot in the eight available but they can try and get as close the winner if they both win well then it will be suns into 10th port into 11th saints down to 12th or if port win by more than gold coast point to 10th suns into 11th saints into 12th so the saints they'll be they'll be they're they're in danger they can go all the way down to 12th if there's um if both teams win and then next week here's just a little bit of a look ahead to what we have richmond versus freeman or massive game richmond lose then that means you'll think somebody else will take their spot next week in the top eight and they'll show that they're not worthy of making finals this year North versus Hawthorne. This is a danger game for Hawthorne as well. Sydney versus Adelaide. Sydney, they're trying to make top four claims. Port Adelaide versus Geelong. Geelong want to try and make sure they're the minor premiers and premiership favourites. Meanwhile, Port Adelaide playing finals. Lions and the Suns, massive game of footy. The Suns, again, trying to make finals. Brisbane trying to make the top four. They've fallen a step behind. Uh, the Dogs and the Demons is as big as you'll get on a Saturday night. Melbourne looking to try and ink minor premiership. Premiership favourites. Dogs trying to make the eight now. Really interesting games. Carlton and GWS may not seem big, but Carlton have to get the job done and percentage in the process if they want to try and keep their top four hopes alive, they're going to need to get some percentage. And if they can try and win by 40, 50 points, this is, that's the perfect time to do it. Collingwood versus the Bombers. The Bombers are on the rise. Collingwood, though, they can win close games, but another big, uh, they'll, they'll need percentage or points. They, they need to try and get into the top four to Collingwood. West Coast versus St Kilda. This is St Kilda's last roll of dice to make the top eight, and they're going to have to do it at Optus. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you guys in another video on the channel. Thank you guys. All smart for watching. Spy everyone. Flaming footy out.